Now the IEBC, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, told the Ichungwa Kalonzo Musioka National Dialogue Team that they were ready to open the servers with the results of the 2022 elections. Yeah, of course, including the presidential elections. This has caused a lot of excitement amongst Azimio supporters. Finally, the servers are being opened. But I am sorry to blow your bubble. Don't pop the champagne yet. Don't start celebrating yet. Indeed, there's bound to be a lot of disappointment when those servers are opened. Yeah, indeed, we have been here before. Let's break it down. How many servers does the IABC have? Can you guess the number? There are actually eight. None. Ay, 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 ay. Now, really, the suspicion there. Why would the IABC need so many servers? Tell me. Why? Can we speculate that the reason was to play dodgy, dodgy games? Yeah. For the government to play dodgy dodgy games through the intelligence community when they want a certain candidate to go through and they don't want another candidate that is what would be forced to assume but of course you're free to give me another possible answer to that question eight servers is ozote zanini but now here is where the real deal is in 2017 the servers with those presidential elections were located in France. Remember that? And that is not all. In 2017, the Supreme Court, Justice David Maraga's Supreme Court, ordered the ABC to open the servers. And do you know what the ABC did? They opened the servers all right, but they opened only one. And so the narrative amongst Jubilee politicians. We have opened the servers. What is Raila talking about? Tumefungua server. Now many Kenyans would swallow that story. Hook, line and sinker. After all, we are not all technical. Not many people understand even what a server is. Now in 2017, the Supreme Court, of course, acknowledged that actually IABC had not fully obeyed that court order. They had only opened one server. One. And indeed, this was one of the reasons why Maraga's Supreme Court nullified the election of President Uhuru Kenyatta. Quite rightly emphasizing the legal fact, according to our constitution, that what is really important with an election are not the physical results, but the process. Okay? And the process, of course, involves the servers. Now, Guess what? In 2022, the same trick was used. Okay? The Supreme Court ordered the servers to be opened. And only one server, once again, was opened. And of course, our Supreme Court ignored that very important piece of evidence that suggested that there was some dodgy, dodgy things happening. And instead, they gave us a verdict that the elections were okay. This time the process didn't matter. And in a ruling that will be etched on the minds of Kenyans for years, decades, it will still be talked about many, many decades from today. The Supreme Court used some very interesting words, non-legal words, like hot air, wild goose chase, so much so that it looked like this ruling was written by a UD activist, or maybe even the leader. And so with that background, you cannot blame most of us analysts for being very skeptical at this breaking news, this news that is supposed to be exciting, that the IBC is finally opening the servers. Because opening the servers may mean opening more than one server, but the wrong servers not the servers with the correct transmitted results from polling stations before they were altered. Because the server we are looking for 
is the server that the whistleblower accessed and gave the world the real results of the presidential elections last August. Now, of course, it is true that the animals called timestamps in virtually every computer application, yeah, which tells you the exact time when that particular thing was done, the exact time when that information, that data, entered the server. And I'm reliably informed that it is almost impossible to change those timestamps. It's virtually impossible. And what that means is that it would not be in the interests of the Kenya Kwanza government to open the real server. Yeah, the server from which the whistleblower gave us the real results. Giving Raila Odinga an emphatic win in those 2022 presidential elections. Although, admittedly, technology is always evolving. And many times, there is technology somewhere which is not widely available, which many people don't know about, that can be used, yeah, maybe to alter those timestamps and open the real server, but with altered election results. Because when the National Dialogue Committee was told that the servers can be opened, they're available, they're also told that the results in the servers are exactly the same as that of the physical forms. Which Bila Kizungumingi means that those results will be the same results that Wafula Chebukati read to very shocked Kenyans last August. Results which many Kenyans knew could not be the correct results. Results which time has proven given us plenty of evidence that they could not have been the correct results. Because somebody who has won an election will have supporters all over the place. Somebody who is sure they've won an election will have no issues having the server opened. In fact, they would be eager for the server to be opened so that they get rid of the controversy of people doubting their win. Yeah? I mean, let us agree. If you've won an election, why would you be so paranoid about the servers being opened? Why would you start to create a narrative that the servers have been opened already when you know very well that only one out of eight servers were opened? Conveniently so. Why would you behave like that if you have really won the elections? Does that make sense to you? But there is yet another party who would not like the real results of our last presidential elections revealed. They wouldn't. And of course, this is the IEBC. Because if that were to happen, it would mean that some officers at the IEBC would have to face legal consequences. Because people would want to know who messed around with those results? Who was responsible for changing those results? Because that is criminal. And therefore both the government and the ABC would not be interested in having the real results finally given to Kenyans. And this is yet another reason why hearing somebody from the ABC confidently saying that the servers are going to be opened should make somebody who knows all these facts very skeptical. Yeah? It would be very difficult to believe that the IABC officials would want to get themselves into trouble. Because that's exactly what would happen if the real results are revealed. Now I had somebody ask the question, let us do a bit of daydreaming. What would happen if the real results are revealed and it is discovered that the loser was actually announced the winner and the winner was announced the loser? What would happen next? Would the country need to go back to elections? Actually, no. If the new results were to be certified, all that would happen is that the earlier issued winner's document 
would be cancelled and a new one drawn up, yeah, indicating the rightful winner. And then that rightful winner would assume office. Very simple. But let us come back down to earth. This big announcement that the server will be opened, finally, yeah, after many months of saying, no, we're not opening the server, the government telling the people. The reason why this news has not excited the people should be excited is because they're suspicious. It is because they believe, due to the reasons we have already discussed in this video, that opening the servers will mean everything else but producing the real results of those elections. And this is why the vast majority of Azimio leaders are of the view that Azimio should pull out of the national dialogue talks. The Chungwa Kalonzo Musioka talks. The simple reason being they don't trust Kenya Kwanza. They don't trust UDA. They don't trust the IEBC, which is very sad. How do you run a country without trust? How do you run an electoral body without trust? At some point, a vast majority of the people will no longer be interested in voting. Because what's the point? You go and vote, you make the effort to vote, only to get results that are fake. I even saw a very interesting comment on social media the other day, where somebody was saying the 2027 presidential results are already out. <laughs> what? Yani we're in the year 2023, but the election results of the future, 2027, are already out. Yeah, we already know who the winner is. Hey, tell in politics where things change so fast, where things are so unpredictable. They said we already have the 2027 presidential election results. And based on what has happened in the past, the games that have been played with servers, it is not very easy to shoot down such an opinion. It isn't. Based on what we've been through, Anyway, let us wait and see how this plays out. But at least now we have the facts about the servers. And therefore most of us will know what to look out for. Very quickly before I go, I'm reminding you once again of my landmark documentary on how to survive a dead economy and how to even prosper in a dead economy very valuable tips and today the price has been reduced to only 29 dollars 2900 as we do the last few days of this promotion therefore rush and get it as i've said in previous videos i believe this information will make a huge difference for where we're going until next time this is chris Come cool, cool.